There are many ways to describe Karlova Kanausgar's My Struggle Book 2, which is subtitled A Man in Love. But to get anywhere near the truth of it, you have to begin with the obvious, which is, and it feels almost confrontational to say, but it's a masterpiece. And it's not the kind of masterpiece that comes with the operatic flash of stylistic acrobatics or the brute force technicality of infinite detail or the symbolic density of something like Ulysses. No, a man in love is brilliant precisely because it does the opposite. It zooms in on the mundanity of life and love with a surgeon's precision, treating every insignificant gesture and awkward interaction like it deserves the weight of history. And here's the thing. Somehow it does deserve that weight. Knausgar's gift is that he makes you feel that everything, grocery shopping, doing his laundry, his arguments with his wife, his anxieties about being a novelist, his existential frustration, it all has not only personal, but universal significance. The book essentially picks up where book one left off. Karlova, as everyone refers to him in these books, is now married to Linda, and they have moved to Sweden to start a family. The book's focus is on love, sure, but not the kind of romantic, idealized love that most authors want to write about. No, Kanausgar isn't interested in writing solely about the blissful parts of love. He's far more interested in its blemishes. Here's a guy who loves his wife and loves his children and at the same time resents them deeply for taking up the mental space he feels belongs to his writing. He details his struggle to balance ambition with domestic obligation in a way that will surely make anyone with children feel both seen and mortified. The narrative is essentially a collage of episodes, his attempts to write and find some sort of work-life balance, the delicate power dynamics of co-parenting, frequent reflections on his childhood and his early literary ambitions. There is a scene where Karlova is basically forced to participate in his daughter's music class, sitting cross-legged on the floor, singing children's songs, surrounded by parents who seem disturbingly at ease in a setting that makes him feel like he's drowning. And as if the humiliation weren't enough, he is consumed by an almost agonizing attraction to the class's graceful teacher whose effortless poise, by contrast, makes him feel unbearably awkward. He is trapped in the absurdity of this moment, feeling crushed between the weight of longing and shame, convinced that life is just this, a series of small, humiliating defeats interrupted only by glimpses of grace too distant to ever be grasped. This volume appears to set its sights largely on the micro-disappointments that accumulate over a lifetime. It is about the irreconcilable conflict between what he thought adulthood and marriage and being a father would be like and what it actually is. And I think this is the core tension of a man in love. Karlova knows that love, by definition, is supposed to make life meaningful, but he is angry at that fact. He's angry that the things that mean the most to him, his marriage and his kids, they are also the things that make him feel trapped. And he's furious with himself for being angry. One of the book's central concerns is a theme I guess I find in a lot of the books I read, and that's the question of identity. What happens to you when the roles you inhabit, husband, father, writer, consume everything you are? Can you ever really be yourself again? Or is yourself a thing that necessarily dissolves 
the moment you enter a relationship or have children or settle into a career. Karlova seems perpetually caught between two realities. He wants the solitude necessary to write, but he also knows that solitude will rob him of the life he's supposed to want. There's an entire section where he agonizes over how little writing he's done since he's become a father, as if every unproductive afternoon is an indictment, not only of his talent as a writer, but of his worth as a human being. What makes Kanausgar's reflections hit so hard is that he never lets himself off the hook at all. He doesn't position himself as a martyr or as some misunderstood genius. He knows he's selfish. He knows his anger is misplaced. There is a moment where he describes snapping at Linda over some trivial disagreement, then immediately feeling ashamed of himself, but utterly unable to apologize. This inability to align his actions with his supposed values becomes a kind of spiritual crisis that runs throughout pretty much the entirety of the book. Another theme, one that feels especially relevant in this current era of toxic productivity, is the lie of personal fulfillment. Karlova loves his children. He loves his wife. He knows these things are supposed to be enough, but they're just not. And the book is brutally honest about the dissonance between what life should feel like and what it actually feels like. In this book, parenting is not a source of endless joy. It's exhausting. It's repetitive. It eats away at the part of Karlova that still wants to be free and reckless and young. But it is still worth it. The love is there under all the resentment and the frustration, but it's messy and it's complicated and it's unheroic. Stylistically, A Man in Love is a bit of an odd beast. It's written in long, flowing paragraphs that shift between the past and the present without any warning at all. There are moments when Karlova will be describing a conversation with Linda, and then suddenly he's transported back to a memory of his father's alcoholism or his teenage experiments with writing. These digressions are not distractions, they're the point. The way Kanausgar's mind wanders reflects the way memory works, slipping between past and present without any regard for narrative structure or coherence. Reading Kanausgar feels like reading someone's mind in real time. There's an intimacy to it that feels voyeuristic, like we are being granted access to thoughts even he hasn't fully processed yet. This is part of what makes the book so compelling. You get the sense that Karlova is telling the complete truth, even when that truth is horribly unflattering. His prose, once again, is hypnotic, a word that gets tossed around a lot when referring to Kanausgar's prose. And for good reason. It's impossible to stop reading it. He just understands something fundamental about the way we experience life. Most of it is boring, but even that boredom is saturated with meaning. The long descriptions of household chores, the petty arguments, the endless reflections on fatherhood, these aren't filler. They are the story. At its heart, A Man in Love is a book about the contradictions that define us. It's about the impossibility of reconciling personal ambition with the demands of family. It's about how love can be both life-affirming and suffocating. It's about how 
our deepest desires for freedom, for solitude, for artistic fulfillment, they're often at odds with the lives we build for ourselves. And my struggle as a reader is to adequately explain just how good these books really are. In my tier ranking of the books I've read in 2024, I place my struggle, book two, right here, just behind the first book. I don't think it's better than the first book. It's seemingly intentionally not quite as narratively cohesive as the first one, but it definitely serves as a phenomenal continuation of one of the best books I've ever read. If you've read My Struggle, book two, A Man in Love, I would love to discuss it with you down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.